Coming up tonight on NB12 Weekend, scenes from last night's tragic shooting in Fox Hill that left four dead. Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! We take a closer look at the victims and hear from members of the community who are struggling to pick up the pieces. Police give the latest details on the investigation, plus the National Security Minister weighs in. Some 60 suspects into custody. We've got those stories and so much more for you tonight. I'm Nakia DeVoe and this is NB12 Weekend. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us here at Cable 12 Studios. Topping news tonight, the tragic story that has shocked and saddened many Bahamians. The final Friday of the year took a deadly turn for several families in the Fox Hill community as nearly a dozen people were injured and four killed by a spray of bullets in a drive-by shooting. Commission of Police Ellison Greenslade and top brass of the Royal Bahamas Police Force were on the scene last night as family members and friends of those injured and killed struggled to come to grips with the tragic murders. Greenslade telling reporters enough is enough. Christina McNeil has details in this report. Bloody night near the park at Fox Hill as four people were killed and eight shot in a drive by shooting. Now police say they're working throughout Friday night into Saturday morning to make sure residents are safe and to locate the suspect or suspects responsible for the deadly shooting. In total, 11 were injured in the incident. Among the dead, three men and a 30 year old woman. An empty stroller left unattended on the wall near the park where the body of one man lay dead. Families near inconsolable as screams filled the air and at least a dozen spent shell casings littered the street. Reports are that a group of people was sitting on the wall near the Fox Hill Park waiting on the release of the official Junkanoo results. Children were playing on the park in the early evening hours. That's when police say a dark gray Honda Accord approached the group opening fire, injuring 11. The vehicle believed to be used in this incident has been located and police now have several suspects in custody. However, Greenslade was in a somber mood on the scene as he and his executive team pledged to bring justice to the community of Fox Hill. We are going to remain in Fox Hill tonight. I will remain in Fox Hill tonight. And uh, we are going to ensure that these communities can, uh, people can go to their beds tonight despite the heavy grief on their hearts and, and to rest. Uh, we offer our condolences to the families that are affected by this senseless uh, um, incident here tonight. Look around us. Decent people in a good community that's all, that's all right. decent, causing no harm people. and you have people coming in and doing foolish things. Right. Yeah. And yes, we can fix this. If we're serious, we can. Yeah. Yeah. So let's, serious, let's fix it. Let's fix it. Commissioner, we're serious. We thank you for your support. Right. Yeah. Know that all of us yeah. support yeah. you and your officers. We want this fixed. I know. Greenslade says police have gone blue in the face arresting young men and women for various crimes, including murder, only to see some of the same faces over again. He says the time has come to draw the line in the sand beginning Friday night. We have to stop this. We've been arresting young Bahamian men, and in many cases women, until we're blue in the face, in possession of illegal firearms of all description, pistols, uh, other handguns, assault weapons of the AK-47 variety, and notwithstanding the arrest and taking them to courts, many of these people are back in our communities reoffending. They seem not to be afraid of us, the system, when I say us. We are going to have to draw a line in the sand. 
and I really believe we're going to have to do that tonight. The level of crime in the Bahamas is unacceptable, he adds, explaining that while police are making significant dents in other areas of crime, the murder rate continues to be a vexing problem. He says perhaps the time has come to take a different approach. When we reveal crime statistics for you um, very, very soon, you'll be amazed at the amount of good work that was done. However, that vexing category of murders, people that are killing Bahamians, Bahamians killing Bahamians, and the people doing it seem to have no fear of anyone. Something is terribly wrong in well, terms Haitian of Bahamians in terms dead. something is terribly wrong in terms of the way that we're dealing with people who murder people in the Bahamas. We are going to have to get our arms around it. Greenslade pledged that he and his team would patrol the streets, knocking on doors until all responsible for the violent murder of four on the park were brought to justice. This as he and area residents sent an appeal for anyone with information to come forward. Uh, we're asking the public at large, all of the good citizens here of the Foxville community and people here in New Providence and the Bahamas in general, who will certainly, certainly receive information about this and have already received information, to please call us as soon as you can. Help us to take these dangerous people from our communities so that they kill no one else. I feel safe. I feel safe to walk anywhere at any time. You know? I, I don't expect this type of thing to happen. Not to me or to the people who live here. So every time something happens, it's hard breaking. You know, it's sickening to us. I'm broken. We've worked so hard. Just the other night we were on Bay Street and we left our heart and hearts and our souls out there. This is not my country. This is not the Bahamas that I grew to love. I say to young men, this is genocide. We are killing each other. We are only killing ourselves. This is not the country that we once grew to love. This has to stop. Police say they have no information that the victims in Friday's shooting did anything wrong. According to the Nassau Guardian's records, the country's murder count now stands at 118. Reporting for NB12, I'm Christina McNeil. Well, NB12 returned to the scene of that vicious attack this morning where we met several residents gathered on the park. There they spoke highly of the four murder victims, prayed for their souls and their families, and comforted each other while vowing that they will not let last night's incident break the spirits of the people of Fox Hill. We stand here on the ground that is fresh with blood, and we acknowledge your supremacy and your protection. But in the way, no matter what they say with us, please, for God's sake, this is your time for strength. Members of the Fox Hill community prayed for 19-year-old Shaquille Demerit, who bystanders say was playing basketball at the time of the shooting. He was reportedly shot to the head and died on the way to hospital. Residents say the young man, affectionately known as Kelly, was working to earn money for college. They also said a prayer for Eric Morrison, who eyewitnesses told us was shot multiple times at point-blank range while pushing a man in a wheelchair. His neighbors referred to him as a community leader. Morrison was pronounced dead at the scene. Residents also mourned 37-year-old Claudzino Davis, one of the leaders of 12th Bahamas Scout Club and a member of the Fox Hill Congo's Jankanu group. Friends described him as a gentle giant. Today, Congo leaders showed NB12 Davis's prized goatskin drum, one that he will never get a chance to beat again. Shanique Sands was also slain in last night's shooting. The 30-year-old woman was described as a vibrant and passionate person. Also a junkanoer, Sands is shown here during happier times, performing with the Congos in Thursday's Junkanoo Parade. She died in hospital hours after the shooting from a gunshot wound to the back. Residents of the community called it a vicious attack and said they are deeply saddened that innocent blood was shed. But if you understand the nature and the character of people that would have been slaughtered, you would understand the passion and the reason 
why we say and we could say without a doubt that these are good people. You see represented here in the names that have fallen and injured are third and fourth generations of this community great leaders. John Davis, a resident of Fox Hill his entire life, founder of 12th Bahamas Scout Group and one of the original members of the Congos was shot to the shoulder during the incident. Davis's wife and nephew were also shot and are being treated in hospital. He returned to the scene to pray with his neighbors and remember the deceased. Davis relived the horror of last night's incident and said he's afraid that it will forever change the tight-knit Fox Hill community. We just was gathered around waiting on the result and all of a sudden I saw a dark wall. There was a vehicle came out of the east, a rapid fires, and everybody started falling down and all that. And um, we tried to see what we could do with uh, those who were injured. We put them on the truck, got those who were slightly injured. There were two of them we couldn't do anything with. Um, one of them, uh, unfortunately, we, we uh, got him on the truck. We got him to the hospital, but he passed on. And he's the leader. He's the leader in the skull group, too. So, um, anyway. Uh, but the impact is this. I don't think you're going to see people gather around here any longer. Wiping tears from his eyes, Davis said community leaders will do their best to build the community back up after this jarring incident. Meantime, Ramming sent a message to Fox Hill residents to speak up instead of allowing fear to deter them from doing the right thing. I don't think our involvement in the community will stop. Uh, so uh, we just have to move on, uh, give God thanks for those who have saved and then we move on. We know it all in this community. Let's provide it. Let's bring justice to the community and make sure that they are brought in. This is no time for I don't know, I don't think, not my business. I see nothing, I hear nothing. This is the time to ensure that those persons are locked down and brought out. 60 people are now in police custody in connection with last night's murder of four people near the Fox Hill Park. And according to officer in charge of the Central Detective Unit, Superintendent Paul Roll, police now believe they know the link between the four murders and the murder of a man on Dorset Street early Boxing Day morning. Roll updated reporters on the investigation so far. Acting on information from members within that community, Overnight, the police from all areas were successful in taking some 60 suspects into custody in regards to the weekend uh, murders. Uh, we have those persons here and we are going to be speaking to them in an effort to try and bring uh, further resolution to this murder in the Fox Hill. One of the people taken into custody last night is a woman. Now police are on the hunt for two additional men in connection to the murders at the park and the murder of Jacoby Brown, who was shot in the face at Dorset Street Boxing Day morning. I wish to make a further appeal right now for this individual whom we believe was involved in the shooting yesterday evening in Fox Hill, Carlos Colebrook. Okay, Carlos Colebrook a.k.a. Scholar. We also have an interest in seeing Amal Hunter, a.k.a. Bao. Okay, a.k.a. Bao. We would like to, to see him. So also, with regards to the murder on Thursday with Jacoby Brown, we would like to see this young man here, David Nichols. David Nichols. If anybody knows where we can find David, we appeal to you to help us to find him, as well as Jamal Gibson, also known as Eggy. These two individuals, we believe, are uh, responsible for the murder of Jacoby Brown. And Again, those suspects are 28-year-old David Nichols of Davis Street, 24-year-old Jamal Gibson, also known as Eggy of Step Street, 25-year-old Carlos Colebrook, a.k.a. Sculler of William Street, Nassau Village, and 27-year-old Amal Hunter, a.k.a. Bo of Williams Lane off Camp Road. Anyone with information on the whereabouts of these men is asked to contact police at 919 or 328-TIPS. 
Meanwhile, Minister of National Security Dr. Bernard Nottage expressing his deepest sympathies to the families of those affected by the murders in Fox Hill. This as he indicated that his ministry will take a second look at the 12-hour shift system in the wake of this tragedy. What you can expect is that uh, this whole matter is being reviewed uh, in the light of what has happened in the last 48 to 72 hours and their steps will be taken to strengthen the, uh, our ability to prevent these uh, matters from being repeated. Uh, the details of that will not necessarily be made available to the public for obvious reasons, but you can ensure that all matters which we believe can assist in this, in our efforts, uh, will be used. Nottage added that in recent times there have been too many acts of this nature and national security officials look forward to the increased cooperation of members of the public in getting crime under control. Well, that brings us to our first break tonight, but don't go anywhere. NB12 will be back with more on this Fox Hill tragedy. Still to come, the Fox Hill MP weighs in. I came back because not only are these my constituents, these are my friends. Plus, another suspect in the armed robbery of the deputy prime minister captured. Stay tuned to NB12 for more news.